Do you get those quests done? Hey, did you get those quests done? Did you get those quests done? Hey, did you get those quests done? Did you get those quests done? Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Noya Dev, the series that aims to prove that one developer can create a successful MMORPG. My name is Dane, and this week on Noya Dev, we're talking about new map features and more friggin' quests! I know that any MMO worth its salt has to have an absolute bonkers amount of quests in it. I mean, look at EverQuest 2 here. The map known as the Common Lands, a beginner level 10 to 20 zone. If you skip over the randomly generated fetch quests, there's still over a hundred quests available in this zone. In Noya's forest map, I've got 40 so far. So I think I'm doing pretty good for being solo. So don't take my quest grumbling too seriously. Problem is, I've been making the same quest lines that I've been talking about for the past two devlogs and that doesn't seem to generate that much interest in the game. But you know what does? New quest features! Woo! We've got three new features added this time. First, interactable objects can now check if there's a specific monster type nearby. Our boy Oyster here is trapped within these thorny vines and the only way to get him out is to kill the vines. These thorns are classified as a monster despite the fact that they don't really fight back, but they are capable of blocking the player's movement. So this is a new proof of concept that we have destructible walls and barriers. When interacted with, Oyster here will check a small area around him if there's any thorn monsters detected. If he detects that there are, he will ask you for help by cutting them down. And once they are cut down, he will move away from the thorns and complete the quest. This new capability opens up all sorts of possibilities for new quest scenarios. Second, we can now force objectives to be completed in a specific order. This was created so foot races could be created in Noya. Back in EverQuest 2, dang, I reference EverQuest 2 a lot. Back in EverQuest 2, there was this cool quest line for a piece of gear called the Journeyman's Boots. Players would have to sprint through several different foot races around the world, and they would have to hit all these different checkpoints in order, or the quest would fail. That was the original reason why I wanted to create this quest type in Noya, but then I remembered using this, I could also recreate this. If you never played Banjo-Kazooie on the N64 before, let me explain. These little turtles sing in a specified order, and the player has to whack them all in the exact same order. We can now make Simon Says nonsense in Noya. Will I create a quest like that? I'll never tell. Third, and lastly, but maybe most exciting, we can now capture monsters now. This is more of a new item mechanic, less than a quest mechanic, or whatever. Certain quests will require the player to capture monsters. It works about how you would expect. Reduce the monster's HP to a specified threshold and then capture it. I never played Pokemon before, but this new mechanic may have just paved the way for a monster fighting mini game in the far, far future. We'll see. But anyway, with this new mechanic, I can say that the fairy and sprite quests are nearly complete, like 75% complete. After which I'll be able to start work on the beehive dungeon. And I've been itching to get started on that. Now because I spent most of this past week churning out quests and quest related mechanics, I didn't think I had anything that was really devlog worthy. To give a bit of insight, my devlog process looks something like this. New devlog drops on Friday, I get a bit over a week of calm while I work on Noya, Tuesday I work on the devlog script, Wednesday I record and cut audio, Wednesday night, and Thursday I edit the video, hopefully to upload to YouTube by Thursday afternoon. So come Monday this week, Week when I realized I had done nothing but make quests for the past 11 days, I panicked! So I turned to you guys in the Discord for ideas of what to talk about for this devlog. And you all had a lot of really great topics! So I wrote down a few of my favorites, and then got distracted and made a map instead. Look, I'm sorry I have the attention span of a goldfish's goldfish, okay? Shiny new game feature, you understand. Right? So, fueled by my millennial grade anxiety, I smashed face first into the new map mechanic. I've been planning to make a proper map for a while now. Problem was, I couldn't figure out the math. 
But Dane, what does math have to do with making a map? I'm glad you asked, random viewer. I didn't want to sketch a map by hand and import it into the game. I am bad at art. So I figured I would just put a camera really high above the actual game and point it straight down. This should work, in theory. In Unity, you can take a camera's output and project it onto a 2D flat plane called a render texture. Have you ever seen security camera footage on a computer screen in a game? That's a render texture. So I would take my God's eye view camera and project it onto a render texture in the map menu. If I take the bottom left corner of the map and the top right corner of the map and place coordinate markers there, I can use those coordinates to figure out where the center is in order to place the camera. Here's where the math problems come in. Trying to figure out exactly how high to place the camera to fit both corner points in view was difficult. Every map was going to have different sizes, so each map's aspect ratio was going to be way different. And to make matters worse, the render texture size has to be set prior to running the game, meaning the render texture size is fixed. So if the camera is outputting something at a different aspect ratio than the render texture, the map would end up either squashed or stretched. And that's not good. It was pretty terrible. It was bad. It was awful. I was terrible. Hey, boo! boo! So I spent an embarrassing amount of time trying to suss out exactly how to modify the render texture aspect ratio to match the camera output and or the map size. And I'll save you the pain of seeing all the failed math. It didn't work. Then I found one Unity thread that had a remarkably simple solution. Just use Cinemachine. Cinemachine is a free Unity add-on that adds a ton of advanced camera features. Remember that feature I tried to make so the camera couldn't leave the map walls? Cinemachine can do that easily. So why didn't I add Cinemachine a long time ago? Two reasons, actually. Reason A, I'm scared of it. Like I said, Cinemachine adds a lot of features. And last time I looked at it, I didn't know much about Unity cameras, so I just noped right out of there. Reason number B, I'm an idiot. I have since learned much more about the Unity camera system and Cinemachine didn't seem so daunting anymore, I was just too lazy to put it in. So I installed Cinemachine with the Unity Package Manager, added a virtual camera, paired a target group with my two map points, tied the virtual camera to my map cam, set the render culling mask to map cam and terrain only, and done. It took like 20 minutes. Tops. Why didn't I do this sooner? Cinemachine took the render texture aspect ratio into account and automatically calculated the camera height based on the distance between the two points. All the math handled instantly. Hey Google, note to self, hit past Dane in the head with a shovel. Save your note. Thank you, Google. Anyway, I threw together a quick particle emitter here and tied it to the player. Now the player is visible on the map. One final feature I'm going to yoink from EverQuest 2 is these quest marker blobs. EverQuest 2 would place these colored areas on the map whenever you were looking for something quest related. And now we can have the same. I only have a proof of concept here, but I can now add these highlighted areas to the map if the player has specific quests ticked in the quest tracker. Nice. And that's it for this week. There was a lot of panic-induced productivity this week, but it all worked out in the end, so that means it's okay, right? <laughs> the main goal here is I want to be able to create a new map every six months or so, and that deadline is quickly approaching with the forest map, so we'll see if I hit it. On the note of those new features is there won't be a server update this week, mainly because there's still a lot of bugs with the new map feature, and everything else is just some quests that got added, but no actual quest died. Dialogue, so I need to finish those first. I want to get all of the dialogue into the quests first and then I will give you guys a working server update. I gotta get back to work. So, see you next time. Bye. <laughs>